This is just a quick video about the radiator setup on the front of my car. So the car is a 2001 Carrera 4, which would normally have the two radiators on the front. Um, what I've done on this side, you see normally through here you'll see the condenser for the air conditioning and I've just replaced that on this side with a, a simple coil, thinking that in this country, not particularly hot in England, so there's no need to have the condensers on both sides. So as you can see there, there's just the radiator on that side. Whereas if we look on the other side, you'll see it's got the condenser as normal. You'll see also on here, there's a thermocouple here. I've got a lot of temperature sensing on this car to see what's going on with the radiators. So we've got a ambient temperature sensor here. So that's sensing the temperature of air before the radiators. And there's a, another thermocouple just there for the temperature between the condenser and the radiator. And then around the back of the radiator, just up there you can see there's a, a thermocouple sensing the temperature of the air exiting the radiator. I've also then got them in the coolant lines. You can see one in the coolant line up there. And if we can see in here, there's another one in the coolant line down there. And the same on the, on the other side. Now, one of the big changes I've done on this car is I've added a central radiator. There is an option for a central radiator on the 996. Um, usually the radiator just mounts in the centre at the front, is a flat panel, and the air from it just vents out underneath the car. But what I've done on this one is I've added the slots along the grille there on the top of the radiator, and I've also added in a 996 GT2 style chimney. So what this does, if you look down there, you see the, the air goes in through the front of it, through the radiator, and then vents upwards. So the air is actually forced to go upwards. And you'll see there's also a thermocouple in there, so I can see the temperature change across the radiator. So to fit this, there is a, a mounting frame. So you can see where it, where it bolts on up here. It also bolts on down at the bottom. So I've had to change the angle of the frame. I've had to move it slightly further back. And also the ducting, which goes on the front of the radiator, I've had to modify that as well because it, this was designed for a GT2 where it mounts the radiator in a different position. So I've had to cut the ducting and then I've basically screwed it back together. So you can see the, the screw holes in there. So I've got eight screws holding that together. And on these side ducts, I've had to slightly trim away around here and then cover that in for where the radiator sits behind it. Also on this car, I've got switchable cooling to the center radiator. So this here is a solenoid, which is electronically controlled so I can turn the center radiator on and off because you can have too much cooling on the car, um, which can cause problems. Um, then I've also just had to put a, a cover under here because the, the ducting, as I say, the ducting's for a GT2, but the, the radiator's slightly different in terms of the fit. So I've put a piece under there to control the airflow as well. I'll get the, the front bumper put on, and then I'll show you what it looks like with that fitted. Here we are with the front bumper fitted. It's not quite so easy to... See the details. Here's the intake with the condenser missing, just the loop on it, and the centre radiator. So you can see we've got the ducting fitted across there. So we've got good, good air distribution all the way across the radiator, and then across to the the other side where we've got the condenser fitted in there. So that's all fitted in correctly now and all tightened up.